how, how did your early experiences, both the, the positive ones and the difficult ones, how, how did they shape and alter your perspective <clears throat> towards spirituality, Judaism, your own path? There, there is a point in which you, you know, the wonderful thing of, of the psychedelics was the mind move. The recognition of the fluidity of consciousness, that um, it wasn't my, my reality maps were no, were no longer absolute. I used to have absolute reality maps in which I figured that I had it all together if I just thought of things in this way, it would be clear. But I could see how all cosmologies are heuristic. Depends what you want to do. And uh, that was very important to me because then I could get into, I want to see the universe from a Christian perspective. I got it. You know, all it needs to do is sort of give a little wiggle in your, in your head and you see it that way. And so that was a very important thing. The other thing was that I could, in going, no, slow, sorry, there was the homework that, that had to be done afterwards. Um, Leary said to me that time, imagine how potent this is and what it might do for people and how if this is misused, it's not, not so good. Ramdas would say in those years, for grass you should have the equivalent of a driver's license mm -hmm. and for acid you should have the equivalent of a pilot's license. Mm -hmm. um, in other words, the preparation and the responsibilities that go with that. Uh, one person once said, if you want to do grass, you have to have three days. A day for preparation, a day for doing it, and a day for digesting it. If you want to do acid, you have to have a week, three days of preparation before, and three days of doing uh, your homework afterwards. The thing of, uh, you see, everything happens so fast. Uh, in this experience, and so many worlds are being traveled through, and um, if somehow there is no womb made for the seeds that are received at that time, the, and, and these need to be nurtured so they, that could, they could grow, so one had to do a lot of contemplative homework. Where was I? What did I see? And what meaning did it have? And what does it demand of me? Uh, so the, the homework is really important. People, ch when I, um, that uh, report that you saw in the uh, Ecstatic Adventure, um, which you referred to, was first given to a group of rabbis. Uh -huh. And this was, uh, we had to re-edit it, uh, so we took out a lot of the Hebrew and so on. But this was a group of rabbis who met uh, in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. And in those years, um, we did something that wasn't usual. We met as, not as rabbis, not as Orthodox conservative reform. So there was a group of people who were interested in theology, and over the spectrum, it was not too big a group. And we shared expenses, had an expense pool, and we met there and, and read to each other our papers that we somehow didn't dare to give elsewhere no. for peer review, for, for discussion and understanding. And so after I had that experience with Tim, um, I wanted to give them that report, and I gave them that report. Um, when we were uh, discussing uh, how to integrate this, one of the people asked me, well, if this was such an important experience, did it make you into a saint overnight? I said, no. Uh, but then I asked him, tell me, what would you call the paradigm of the great revelation? He said, Mount Sinai. 
So I said, that's good. And 40 days afterwards, they worshiped the golden calf. So the moral homework that has to be done is not um, the result of the experience. The experience only opens you up to greater vision. When you have the vision, you have a burden that you have to carry that vision out. In other words, it makes demands on you. But you can also ignore the demands. If you ignore the demands, you shut doors again, and the places that have become transparent become opaque. Mm. So the homework, in order to keep the transparency up, the homework is very important. Mm -hmm. And the, I didn't have, this was, this was a problem and a difficulty, but I would want to say for people who will do this in the future, to have someone who will harvest with you the experience uh, in great detail, and so with whom you could view the various things and the hang-ups. You see, you always, uh, it's not that you can steer. The great thing, the difference I want to say between psychedelics and meditation is, in meditation you always can steer. And when you get close to the abyss, you just steer away. You don't tumble through it. And uh, in psychedelics, you have to do that. You, you can't help go down Niagara Falls, yeah. <laughs> right? So uh, when you get to the blind spots in your, in your soul, the things where the neurosis are centered, um, of course you want to avoid them. That's the time when you want to go pee. Uh, in those days I smoked cigarettes still, you know. Uh, you, want to, you want to make love. You want to do anything but uh, stay with uh, the things that, that are in the pivot of your anxieties. Uh, and, uh, and for a moment the door opens up and you see uh, what Gurdjieff calls the... No, the word doesn't come right now. The, the Enneagram people call it about the, the fixation, that mm -hmm. thing yeah. that is your, your flaw around which everything happens. Um, it only takes different forms, but it's always the same issue, mm -hmm. the same gestalt. And for a moment the door opens up and you see it. And if you have someone with whom you can mm -hmm. um, talk this over, and uh, something, it becomes really helpful. I didn't have that, so it was for me taking time out and thinking about it um, and so on. I'm sorry I didn't keep a journal uh, for that. I wasn't into journaling at that time. So if, if you remember that, um, the lady who gave out sugar cubes. <laughs> But let me see, I should have that protocol here. And if not here, then I'll get the other one. See, this was the psychedelic book of the dead. And so on. I did a, a, a Hebrew poem. Uh, I'll give you a running translation. I'm amazed at this experience. It seems to be so easily attainable. And the cup of miracles, uh, through the cup of miracles, I awaken, and everything is now holy. There is no profane. <laughs>